Hi, my name is Shadi Akureshi. I'm one of the registrars in West Middlesex Hospital. And uh, um, the fact that you're watching this DVD actually means that you've been recently diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Um, and you're also an inpatient in acute medical admissions unit or on an acute admission unit. Um, uh, this DCD includes basic information for somebody who has been recently diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Um, and remember that the information in this section is general information and it is important that you discuss any concerns or problems that you might have with your allocated diabetes team. What is diabetes? It's an important question. Diabetes is a lifelong condition uh, and there are two main types, type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. There are uh, up to 2.9 million people in UK with diagnosed diabetes and there are up to 890,000 people who do not know that they yet have diabetes. What is type 1 diabetes? The type 1 diabetes is a condition that develops when the body's immune system attacks and destroys the cells that produce insulin. As a result, the body is unable to produce insulin and this leads to the increased amount of the blood sugar in the blood, which in turn causes serious damage to different, part, different organs in the body. What is, how is type 1 diabetes treated? Insulin is a hormone which is produced in the pancreas and it actually is utilized in all over the body for the utilization of glucose. The pancreas lies just behind the stomach. The function of the insulin is to help our bodies use that glucose for energy. For all the patients with type 1 diabetes, insulin is essential to keep the blood sugar control normal and under check. Insulin is the key essentially to unlock the door to the body cells. Once the door is unlocked, the glucose could be used through the door in the cells to produce energy. If there is an impairment of insulin being used into the cell, then it can lead to a serious condition which is called diabetic ketoacidosis. It's very important to be familiar with the term diabetic ketoacidosis. Diabetic ketoacidosis is a potentially life-threatening condition and it's more common in patients with type 1 diabetes. Diabetic ketoacidosis results essentially from the shortage of insulin. In response, the body switches and starts to use fat as a source of energy. What that indirectly does is leads to buildup of acids in the body. And you might end up having symptoms that might make you feel persistently sick, you feel thirsty, you pass a lot of urine, and you have tummy pain. If you have been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, what kind of support you would expect from us? Learning to manage your diabetes takes time, patience and effort. You may not be, you may also be coping with different emotions. After diagnosis, you might face anger, confusion or depression. When you're diagnosed, you will be assigned to a, a dedicated diabetes team. There is a lot to learn and our diabetes team will help you understand the important aspects of your condition. In the next sections of this DVD, Parminda, one of our diabetic nurse specialists, would take you through the important aspects of managing your condition, including your how to monitor your blood sugar and also how to inject different forms of insulin. Michelle, one of our dietitian, would give you advice basic advice with regards to the aspects of diet that need to be changed to manage your condition. I hope you find this DVD useful. Hi, I'm Paminda, Diabetes Specialist Nurse. Uh, you heard Dr. Qureshi uh, talking about insulin therapy, the import, uh, diagnosis of type 1 diabetes and uh, treatment of diabetes, uh, type 1 diabetes, which is insulin therapy. So I will talk about insulin therapy, blood glucose monitoring, and all, all about insulin, injection site, storage of insulin, injection technique, which I will demonstrate. So I will now talk about insulin therapy, why we need insulin, yeah? Once you are on type 1, once you have type 1 diabetes, you will be on two types of insulin. Uh, one is with the food and the other one is a basal insulin. Insulin with the food. 
in brief the normal pancreas secretes half its insulin as a bolus after eating to replace this insulin you will need a quick acting insulin this dose of insulin has to match the amount of food you eat and particular the amount of carbohydrate which the dietitian will teach you on uh, on our carbohydrate counting course and in the next slides our dietitian michal will talk about briefly basal insulin requirement the normal pancreas secretes the other half of the insulin gradually during the day and night so the so that's why it's called basal secretions to replace this insulin you need insulin a long acting insulin to work when you are not eating you need much insulin when you exercise sorry less insulin when you exercise because exercise allows glucose to enter the muscle cell for immediate use basic insulin rules without insulin you become weak your sugar levels rise and the high blood sugar levels damages your body and you are so being unconscious is always very dangerous especially when you are driving because of risk of choking an ambulance should be called immediately if someone with a diabetes found unconscious or collapsed you should never try to put food or drink in the mouth of someone who is unconscious alcohol and hypos hypos can be particularly dangerous following alcohol if you have a hypo after drinking the body is less able to release stored glucose and the blood glucose level may fall dangerously low it is recommended that people on insulin should not drink more than 3 units of alcohol for a man of two units for a woman per day and that you should always eat when you are drinking and have a bed time snack to lower the risk of hypos now i will go to injection site where should be you should be injecting insulin i should take that off sorry insulin should be injected into the outer mid thigh Uh, and import importance of rotation of injection sites you should rotate injection sites and never keep giving injection at one site if you keep giving injection at one site it forms lumps which is called lipohypertrophy that means the insulin is not going to work it's going to keep collecting at one place and then all of a sudden it's going to release and it can cause severe hypo and that's one of the cause of hypos we don't recommend people injecting into the arms because it should be a hair outer uh, part of our uh, upper arm and people when they inject here i see lot of people come with a lump here in front of their arms because people can't reach there it's difficult to inject if someone is doing for them is fine to do similarly on your gluteal uh, this uh, back of your uh, support here as well at the on the uh, outer upper uh, bum we don't recommend as well because it's difficult to reach there as well if someone is doing for you then it should be fine so it's outer thigh and the tummy below belly button like a smiley face all that area you can use to give injection and is given subcutaneously remember this is our skin next to our skin is a subcutaneous fat we don't want to give insulin deeper than that so it, it is just in the subcutaneous fat we are not in the muscles so if we give deeper than that the absorption is going to be different so that's that's the injection sites storage of insulin where do we keep insulin the individual manufacturer storage recommendations and expiry date should be read before you use insulin insulin must never be frozen Di and never keep the insulin in the direct sunlight it can damage the insulin unused insulin should be stored in the fridge after opening insulin a vial or a cartridge can be kept for uh, for 30 days or for one month insulin uh, insulin vial once is open 
if it's kept in the fridge, should be discarded after three months. And once it's 